A wonderful greetings to everyone who has joined in for today's masterclass. On behalf of Manage Engine family, I would like to extend our sincere thanks to all our customers, partners, and users who are currently evaluating our products. Thank you very much. In today's session, we are going to look at the integration between two big products of ours, Service Desk Plus and Desktop Central. Now, both are giants in its own way, an ITSM product, Service Desk Plus and Endpoint Management product, Desktop Central. What happens when you integrate both and how you can harness the potential between these two products and that's going to be today's presentation let me introduce myself my name is santosh narasimhamurthy and i'm part of manage engine i'm a technical evangelist for endpoint management and security line of products i'm going to keep my agenda very simple today let, let me walk you through that uh, we are going to see why we need an integration between desktop central and service desk plus and the, how, what are the different features that you will get if you integrate uh, Desktop Central and Service Desk Plus? And then we move on to how to integrate, right? While we know the features, how do I integrate these two products? We're going to see that live, how I can integrate both these products and start using it. And we are also going to see three different scenarios which will be useful for you. One is taking remote control of end user machines from the service desk plus or from the incident ticket. So that's one of the uh, key tasks for IT administrators. Whenever they receive an incident, they would always try to take remote of the user machine and try to troubleshoot those issues. So we're going to look at that and how you can deploy an application. This, that's number two in priority for any IT admin, deploying an application to any users in my network whenever I receive a request to install an application. And then when it comes to mass installation, how do I go for approval based method? Whenever a user requests a software, I should validate or I should automatically send it to an approver. Post the approval, I have to get it installed automatically. How to automate this process? That's number three. And few other scenarios and solutions that we usually see as a questions from our customers, we are going to discuss on those lines as well. So that's going to be my agenda. Now, just to give you a brief introduction about what is Desktop Central. Now, Desktop Central is a product, unified endpoint management product that has all both client management features and modern management features in it. So if I have to tell you in a nutshell, I can show that on the screen, you can manage devices all in one roof. You can do vulnerability assessment and remediation. You could do web protection. You could do mobile device management, modern management of modern operating system, a 360 degree approach in application management, asset management, comprehensive remote control, and insightful analytics and reporting, right? We offer in different formats. We, are, we do have it on-prem. We have cloud version of the desktop central. We do have MSP version, or we put it as RMM. Right now, we unified it with another product. We have RMM version of Desktop Central. And if you're an enterprise IT, you have a separate license just for your basic needs. So different flavors are available when it comes to Desktop Central product. So it's a unified endpoint management product, which has both security and management in it. If you want to impose security on endpoints, you can do it and also other IT management features. So that's Desktop Central. So when we are going to integrate with Desktop Central and Service Desk Plus, you get all these in one shot. Let me talk about a few of the awards that Desktop Central has won. Now, as you know, Manage Engine is recognized in top four, top four places in 2021 in IDC Marketscape. Not only that, Desktop Central especially is have has been uh, reviewed in Gartner Peer Insight Customer Choice and it's been awarded for consecutive year, years, 2018, 2019, and 2020, there was a different uh, category and that's why it's not there. But again, we're back in 2021 as well. 
So we've been consistently having customer insight, I mean, customer choice award for at the endpoint management line of products. So these are different awards that we won. You can log into the uh, link that's shown on the bottom of the screen to read different reviews from different customers to see if uh, those uh, reviews will help you to find the right product. Getting inside desktop central, what are the things that you can manage? I can manage desktop, laptops, mobile phones, tablets, server operating systems, point of sale equipments, and browsers. These are the different endpoints that we consider, and all these can be managed from a single platform. You would wonder why we add browsers to this list with increase in SaaS-based applications. Now, we consider browsers to be more important, and that's why it's added to an endpoint list. And any device that can install the agent of Desktop Central, you should be able to manage those devices. That's the understanding. When it comes to support or operating system, we support Windows, Mac, and Linux operating systems as well. If you would like to know more details about it, we pretty much support all Windows platforms right from Windows 7, conditional support to Windows 10 and Windows 11 as well. So we do, I mean, Windows 11 that's upcoming up, coming up, Mac OS as well to Big Sur, we do support all the Mac operating systems. If you'd like to know more details, just leave us a comment. I do have an expert panel who should be able to give you answers or I can answer you post my session as well. While I say that, during the course of the session, if you have any queries, please feel free to post it on chat or post it on the question window. My team will be answering you. And more than that, I will also be able to answer those questions once the session is over. Getting into my agenda, the first one, why integrate Desktop Central and Service Disk Plus? Why should I integrate it for the first place? To understand this better, I want to take you to three different type of users that we have. When I say digital workspace, right now, our digital workspace, or right now they call it as work from anywhere, kind of an option. There are three different type of users that we identified from our customers. Right. One is a regular user with a VPN connection, meaning what I say here is you have your application on the on-prem or you have your applications in your data centers. You provide VPN to these users who are going to connect remotely and probably get connected to those applications and work from home or work from anywhere they want. That's the user number one. The other type of user is probably back to the office scenario, right? Post-COVID situation we will have partially people going to the office. So there will be some part of users who will be in the office connecting to these applications at the office. So these type of users exist as well. When I say users, the endpoints exist. The third type would be people who will be utilizing the cloud applications for their business needs. So all their applications, business applications will be on cloud. They don't require any VPN. All they require is just an internet connectivity. They can easily connect from anywhere and get connected to those applications on cloud and uh, use it for business needs. So the three different, uh, different uh, type of users will have different type of devices as well. We will have mobile phones, we'll have laptops, you might have desktops, some kiosks as well. But all these things, when I, when I say endpoints, they fit into these three types of connections to those business applications, right? Three type of users that we usually see. So once we have this distributed or digital workspace, it's important that we enhance the end user experience. So what is the benefit? The first benefit is enhancing the end user experience experience when it comes to incident management. Imagine distributor across the world when they raise a ticket, how do you enhance their exp user experience? It's not as same as you walk to a IT pit stop or you walk to an IT uh, station and give your laptop, get it fixed and get back to your workspace. No more, it's not going to be that anymore. Rather you raise a ticket for everything and you need a better end user experience, pushing the downtime lower. And not only end user, when I talk about the IT administrator, think about from this side, they should also be able to perform IT daily IT tasks without any problem, reducing the downtimes. And keep in mind, most of the time when they raise a ticket, there could be non-technical first level IT tech, help desk technicians 
who will be answering these calls or probably getting incidents. Now, how do these guys respond to those technical incidents that's happening? If you integrate Desktop Central, they will also be able to perform those technical jobs even at, at the IT help desk level. First level, technicians could resolve it. This would reduce the load on the second level or the technicians that are behind them. Then the third benefit is reducing the downtime for basic requirements, things like installing an application or things like running a script at the end user view or restarting services. These are very, very basic things from a technician point of view. How about reducing this downtime instead of logging into remote control every time, remote management, if I'm able to do that, then that's going to reduce my downtime. And finally, I have advanced remote control, right? Not only remote, as part of remote management, you, we also have advanced remote control. For roaming users anywhere in the world, you could take a remote control of those machines and you could perform IT operations from anywhere you want. You just have to have those agents installed and these agents has to report to the central server and you should be able to do all these activities from anywhere you want. Now, these are the benefits of integrating Service Disk Plus and Desktop Central in a distributed architecture. When it comes to technical details, what are the different features that we integrate? Asset data of all the machines, hardware, software, what's installed on those machines, everything will be when you integrate will be scanned by the agent and posted on the ticket so that when you get a ticket, you will know which operating system it is, what hardware is it, what software is it. All those details will be available on, on the incident itself. And you can install and uninstall software right out of the incident itself. Let me probably give you a quick uh, view of what it looks like. So this is Service Desk Plus, as you guys are aware, and these are the different requests that comes in. So I'm just comparing with Desktop Central. This is the Desktop Central product of ours uh, that integrates with your Service Desk Plus. So when I go to in inventory, so I have to log in. Never save your passwords. So I go to inventory and computers, and I, if I open up a specific machine, this is ideally mine. It shows different hardware, softwares, in fact, modern management details as well, geo tracking and fencing, things like that. So these hardware and software details will be posted to Service Desk Plus. So if I go, say, for example, these are the different requests that comes in. And uh, let's say I open up a specific request that came in from that asset. I can see the asset has been tagged with this. So with these details, if I click on the asset details, it's going to tell me about the hardware details, software details, what are the relationships? This is a CMDB. I'll come for this later on. So you can have a beautiful relationship diagram for every asset. What are the different users that are connected? And uh, what's the operating system and things like that. So we'll talk about that later on. So what are the different hardware, softwares, and asset details? All those things. In fact, we'll capture warranty information as well. Things like that will be automatically updated over here. From Desktop Central, it will automatically post in to Service Desk Plus. So that's one of the uh, easiest way to identify what kind of hardware or, or software that user is using, and those details are there. Going back to my presentation, you can run scripts and configuration templates right out of your incidents. I'm going to talk about those things as well. So on the Service Desk Plus, when you receive a ticket like this, I'm unable to receive and send an email you have custom actions that you could do, right? Running a script right from the ticket. You click on run script. You can choose which script you want to run and which uh, workstation it's going to be and whether you want to close the ticket after resolving the issue or not. All those things from a click of a button. So running scripts and configuration templates right out of uh, so the incident ticket. Advanced remote control is also available. So. When you have a ticket like this and uh, say, for example, you would like to initiate a remote control, all I have to do is just click on that and I can initiate remote control right out of there. We'll talk about this in a while. And also logging help desk requests. Whenever they want to raise a request and alerts, they can easily do it if they have desktop central agent. The edge here is that 
when they if they want to raise a ticket for imagine for example they have a specific issue that they are not able to explain to the it technician something like system slowness at a, at some time at some part of the application whenever they use a specific module of an application your system is very slow or probably some activity that's going on that they are not able to explain probably a screen recording should be a great option so those things logging tickets from desktop central would be helping you so i'm just showing you a little example of how it's going to be from the agent i can send a request like this and i can say attach a screenshot or probably a small recording we'll talk about those things as well so that will create a law a request on the service desk plus that you could utilize so these are the different features that you will get if you integrate with desktop central and service desk plus so i'm just trying to put a different chart there because both these products have cloud versions and on prem versions so i've just put a comparison between desktop central on prem and versus desktop cent uh, service desk plus on prem on the right hand side you have service desk plus on demand what are the different features that you get if you integrate both these products from an on prem point of view if you want to know more about cloud or on demand we have a session tomorrow that's going to talk about more on cloud but today we are going to talk about from an on prem perspective what are the different features that you will get but this is just a comparison for you to understand now before i go into each feature and tell you how it exactly looks like or what it does there are some key features that enhancement that's been av that's available with service desk plus product recently so the version 11300 11, from there on it's going to be a unified agent so what we are trying to achieve is to unify the agents for different products as the first step desktop central and service desk plus agent is right now unified doesn't mean that you have to purchase desktop central when you purchase the service desk plus that's not the intention but the agent will be one agent even if you use just the service desk plus or if you're going to use desktop central and service desk plus together so one agent for both these products unified agent for asset discovery on both these products and you will have a remote control all the time previously service desk plus if you want remote control then you will probably have to integrate with desktop central or you must have another remote control tool uh, in order to for, for you to work from the incident but going henceforth your agent or the service desk plus agent which is aka desktop central agent is going to perform all these activities for you so from the next time you upgrade on it's going to be one agent it's no more going to be a service desk plus, plus agent it's going to be desktop central agent that's going to be installed on all your endpoints which would do both asset and other activities as well now i want to tell you something if you for if you are going to use the asset feature that's already there in service desk plus you don't have to buy any licenses that's that's uh, the same as what you have purchased already there is no difference there if you're going to use other functionalities things like patching process or deploying an application which is a sole uh, property of desktop central then you might need extra licenses but other than that if you are going to upgrade to the latest version you don't have to you know buy desktop central licenses for asset discovery now if you want more information you can log in to the link that's shown on the bottom of the screen that's going to give you ample information if you're still not convinced you can always log a ticket with us we have happy technicians who will be able to answer your queries first things first for these things to work you need to set uh, integrations up between service desk plus and desktop central so let me take you directly to the product and show you how simple it is to you know integrate both these products let me take you to the product so first things first first i have to generate api when it comes to api it's all about the key that you generate so where do i do that i go here and i have an option that's called api generation admin api key generation so i just have one user who is an administrator so i have generated a key from here so i can even click on regenerate to regenerate the code so once you generate it copy the code go back to service desk plus and in service desk plus on the far right you have admin and if you scroll down you will see the operate options called integration in integrations you can click on desktop central server integrations now service desk plus pretty much have 
a lot of integrations with all our ME products. I could say most of our products integrates with Service Desk Plus. So it's like one shop solution for all your IT uh, needs. So in that you have desktop central as well. You can go in and put your API key here and then you test the connection. Test the connection and say it's going to go through a process. It's going to test whether the connectivity is there and if it's able to reach out and a compatible version is there or not. Now, the point to be noted is both these products should be upgraded if you want to do the integration part right now. So make sure you upgrade both these or otherwise on those green check marks, you will have issues and it will say the product is not compatible. And if you scroll down, there are a few other things on integrations here that you will need to know is you, you should configure what are the different templates that you want to manage, right? So it's basically, say, for example, if you want everybody to install and install software, you're not going to do that, right? Not all roles, only a specific roles, probably an administrator or a technician. You might, you will have different roles in the help desk. You don't want uh, everybody to install applications as and when they need. No, you can select which roles can install or uninstall applications. Role-based administration is possible. That's what it is shown here. And whether you want to associate all the templates or specific templates from Desktop Central, you could do those things as well. So you can go ahead and select the templates that you want, whichever that you have configured, and so that only those templates will be, uh, you will be able to perform Desktop Central operations from your incident. So two things that you do, get your API pasted here from Desktop Central, choose which are the things for which role you have to define it here and then save it. This is number one. Number two, you will have to generate an API from Service Desk Plus and post it on Desktop Central as well. So I can do that right from Desktop Central itself. So I go to Admin, Service Desk Plus. And here I have already integrated Service Desk Plus. That's why you see all these are here. What if I want to modify? I modify it here. So I give the details of the server, where the server is, what type of connectivity it is. And again, if I click on Generate, it's going to open up the Service Desk Plus page because I have logged it, logged on on the same tab. It's not asking me to log in, but if you are not on the same tab uh, or on the same browser, you might have to log in and then click on Generate, and it will generate a key API key that you can place it and click on Next. It would get saved. So two things: you create an API key on Desktop Central, post it on Service Desk Plus, and you generate an API key on Service Desk Plus and post it on desktop central. When you're done, the integration is pretty much finished. So how does this basically work when it comes to integration, right? Putting the API keys and all that is okay, but how does the integration actually works? So just to give you a brief idea, you have desktop central server, which is on-prem here and service desk plus, which is again an on-prem. Now the agents which uh, desktop central has is installed on all the missions that you're going to manage all your asset information will be posted to Desktop Central. Your Desktop Central server will then take those asset details and post it to Service Desk Plus server. There will be a question, how often? Now, every 90 minutes, our agent talks to the server and then posts the details. Now, every day once or monthly or weekly, based on however you are scheduling the scan, it's going to run a scan on the asset details and it's going to update the central server and the desktop central server will then post those details on Service Desk Plus server as well. Now, there will be another question. How about real time? What happens if there is a change in application? What happens if I upgrade? Real time changes will be captured by the agent and it will be updated to desktop central server and the central server will put it to Service Desk Plus server as well. So this is the basic architecture behind how these two product works when it comes to integration part. Just to sum it up, you create API keys in Desktop Central and Service Desk Plus, and you choose which features you want, and you, gen you then get those integrations uh, set up already. So you have different features that you can feel free to select. It could be asset data or only the remote control based on how you want. You can go ahead and select it. Let me take you to the first uh, option. So in order to understand these features better, I have just designed a couple of uh, uh, scenarios. First thing is, let's say you have a user who is going to raise a request uh, saying his he has audio issues. 
and uh, you have to fix these audio issues either by remote management or probably take a remote control of that user machine and then get this fixed that's your idea so how are you going to achieve this as a help desk technician right let's go ahead and see how to do that now this is my service desk plus and uh, this is my home page and i have a lot of requests that comes into my bin so one of them that talks about audio issues or probably network issues what are requests that comes in right so let's say i'm going to pick up a request right so when, once the request is here i want i have to make sure that i i have to make sure that i run a specific script in order to clear the audio issue or probably run uh, uh, look into go into a command prompt or probably run into check what are the different uh, processes that they are running on those machines without disturbing the user how do i go about doing it so i see the asset information is here if the machine is live it will show you these details are taking remote control and you will also have other information about you know system manager functions chatting with the end user so i can even chat with the end user saying hey you raised the request with me for an audio issue uh, is it a good time to take remote control and based on that you could do that as well or something like this the system manager functions that i was talking about so without disturbing the end user i am looking at the different processes they have probably when it comes to audio issue it's just matter of killing a service or killing an exe and restarting a service something like that so i should be able to look at the task manager or different services that are running and i should be able to take a decision whether to restart a service or not right out of here i should be able to do that right from the services and not only that if i would like to do something like a command prompt right a remote command prompt i want to run a command line i could do that as an administrator remotely right from my ticket now i don't even have to ask the end user it's not going to disturb them at any point at all so if you are a, if you are a king with powershell script then you can pretty much resolve all your issues uh, i mean with the command lines or through scripts you can deploy it right from through desktop central file manager if you would like to you know browse through the system and see what are the different files they have sometimes you know space could be an issue how do i identify it i can just simply log into the machine and see how much space they have the temp file you don't have to you know tell the user you could delete the temp files yourself those kind of activities you should be able to do right out of here right that's number one second way of resolving it is you tried every step you want to take remote control that's no other option then you go ahead and chat with the user and say hey uh, buddy i would definitely like to take a remote control please give me a specific time and then at that specific time you can go ahead and take desktop central remote connections as well it is interesting that you have another option also is that say rdb and if you have integrated any other remote software you will have those facilities as well right now we are through, going through desktop central so i initiate a remote control right from here so it automatically picked what computer name it is so i can say it's a audio issue right and then i initiate a session so it's going to take a remote control of my end user machine so that's essentially my machine i have two monitors one that you are viewing the other one that i have so i can select the monitor that i want and then go into troubleshooting mode what are the different things that you would probably have to understand is uh, you will be able to view what the end user is viewing at the moment if you don't want to do that we also have options for that as well where we can blacken the monitor for the end user and you can perform your operations sometimes it's actually irritating when you have end user telling you what to do as an it technician i have been it admin myself so i understand that so you can blacken the monitor and you perform your operations and then uh, give it back to them or you can even disable their inputs as well so you could do all those using the remote control options right out of this ticket by this way you should be able to resolve the end user ticket now while i talk about the remote connectivity there are few other options that i would also like to highlight going back to desktop central these settings you can do that in desktop central so that it will be reflecting there on service desk plus so i go to tools that's where remote control is there in desktop central if you are new to desktop central so i go to remote control and you have different options one of the top things is you have the screen recording option so you can enable screen recording so that now whenever you take remote control and do something on the end user that's a compliance right 
so you can comply saying every session that you create will be recorded and you can use it for audit purpose you can enable screen recording all the time and also user confirmation when i took the uh, remote control you saw that it did not ask anything to the user it just went ahead and took the remote or uh, remote screen of the end user now that could be a problem in some institutions but if you would like to make that say you need to get user confirmation before getting into those user machines i can do that how about servers that's the next question as an it administrator probably for the end users i might have to ask their permissions but when it comes to server machines or important application servers i don't want to ask permission because there will be nobody apparently in that those machines so i can even add exclusion list here right there is a exclude computers option here that will give you option to you know which are the machines that should be excluded those uh, those machines will be exempted out of user confirmations right you could do it add specific machines alone to uh, exclude from the user confirmation and also you can uh, get the history audit who took how much time remote control and not only on the remote control side if you go to the small quick launch button on the right and you will have something called all action log viewer on the right hand side bottom on the audit so this records every single actions that you do using desktop central something like remember i tried to view the file manager right i tried to open the command prompt right it's going to record every single action so i have run something on the command prompt on that end user machines so if a help desk technician messes up you know what's happening it will record every single action and audit and this cannot be deleted for you from the ui or from the server so these kind of op uh, options are available when it comes to remote control if you think it's of too much power for a help desk technician you can control it you can role based administration and you could be specific to machines and all those options are available right that's the first Uh, option uh, or first feature that i want to talk about troubleshooting an issue remote management either through remote control or through other remote management features the second one would be this is just a screenshot of uh, the remote controls that we took going to the second one installing a in software for, uh, i mean software from the incident whenever it's raised in the ticket right imagine somebody would be uh, they would like to get office 365 probably that's a commercial application think about chrome right everybody wants chrome or other browsers in there uh, apart from the ones that's installed in operating system so whenever they raise a request right how do i go ahead and approach it so i go to my service desk plus again instance i go to request i just create a sample request that's come that came in let's say please install a requested software in my machine i go in there and uh, probably they are asking for office 365 as an example and you know this is a, this user requires office 365 then you can go ahead and say custom actions install and uninstall software you click on that it's going to open up a page you can select the uh, i mean applications that you want because an asset is already tagged with this incident it has chosen the workstation already right if you have multiple assets that's been associated with the ticket then it will allow you to choose which uh, you know workstation you want to install this specific product you can select it you can choose to install or uninstall based on the packages that are created in desktop central if you have a specific username that you have to install on as an administrator you can give your product uh, passwords here as well and once the installation is complete you can mark this ticket as closed so it's just one click of a button if you have created the package already on desktop central if somebody asks for a software you come in there choose the software save it and that's it you can forget the ticket it's going to be closed after installation so that's very very convenient for any help desk technicians and on the background what do i need to do will this be automatically be available so from the technician side they can create packages in software deployment in desktop central in software deployment we have options called packages whatever packages that a technician has created here those packages will be listed for the help desk technicians as well in in order to help the it technicians to create pass packets packages we have templates say for example i need chrome all i have to do is go here search for chrome 
and there will be pretty much a lot of templates that's available for Chrome for different operating systems. Choose the one that you want and click on create package. It's going to download the application from the vendor website, apply the appropriate switches that are required and your packages will be created as well. Now we also have an option where you can auto update this template as well. What if a new version of Chrome comes up? Would you like to create a package automatically, right? So those options are also there. So I'm going to, I have pretty much cre created for Chrome. Let's say, let's create this package. When I click on create package, so I have pretty much, uh, I've added it to the automatic uh, update templates on the left-hand side. So I already told them, if it's a Chrome, go ahead and automatically up upgrade these Chrome packages. So, so far it has two different or four different packages for Chrome itself. See the release dates from the August till July, it's going to upgrade those packages, right? So that's how, that's how you get these applications installed to these end users. Now, what about commercial applications that are not available on these templates? You could create a package of your own and uh, uh, apply your own silent switches. We have manual package creations as well. You could write uh, switches, pre-deployment, post-deployment activities and create those packages and you can install it right from the help desk incident ticket. So this is this is helpful if it's like one user request uh, requesting or probably multi-user or five or six users that are requesting. But when it comes to you know a majority of users, Chrome is a, actually a best example or probably you know, Office 365 is a big best example. When there are multiple people who are going to request, now I need an approval method where I can install these applications already. I mean, automatically. So what we have did is in Desktop Central, we have an option called self-service portal. Right? So a, a user can launch this self-service portal right from a desktop or probably from a tray icon and he will have the list of softwares that are defined for them. Say for example, finance team may have a specific list of applications. IT team might have a specific list of applications. I can list it down and make them appear for that group of people alone. So for me, only two applications are visible even though I have 10 or 15 packages created. I can make this available. Now I can raise a request. I can click here. I'm gonna cancel this request. I'm going to do it one more time just for the audience purpose. So I click on the request and I say, I need this application, resend this request. So it's going to raise a ticket on the Service Desk Plus site, right? I can go ahead and, and, and once this ticket comes through, right, let me take you to the Service Desk Plus. So I go to requests and, uh, So I can see I've already raised this request a couple of times. So it's going to come in over here. And once the application is requested out of here, there are two ways of getting this installed. One is uh, manual method. When I say manual method, you are going to submit it for approval, right? So you can say he has raised in a request. I can submit this for approval or I can do one other way. I can, uh, in fact, uh, I can go ahead and do it in automatic ways. How do I do it? I go ahead and create a service catalog. Click on settings. There is something called service catalog. In service catalog, if you scroll down, you see the option called software. You click on the software, you create a new request or a catalog. Let's edit it. I've created it already. So what happens is this, you create a flow. What application it has to be, who has to approve it, and what should be the template and what's the workflow, who all should can approve, who's the technician who could approve it, all those workflow, once you create it, what happens is when he raises a request, it not, it's not going to come in and stay there as an incident, rather you can see that, right? The one that I raised right now on 28 July, it's come, it has come in here. It also will be available here as an approval on my approvals. I can click on the my approvals, if you have designed a workflow automatically, it will automatically go to the correct approver. So in my case, I have added myself as approver so that when he raised the ticket, it automatically came in here. If I click on approve, it's going to install the application automatically. If I reject, the request will be rejected. 
So when people request application, you can split these and create different service catalog templates and uh, you can have approver approve, approve these requests. So what you have to do that is for that is, like I said, you have to create a service catalog here. And uh, when, when you create a service catalog for request for so software installation, you have to take the name whatever uh, whatever name that you have created the catalog and you have to paste it on desktop central software deployment self service portal settings you go ahead and paste the catalog detail name here so it will follow this specific service catalog whenever the approve i mean request for software is raised so by this way you can minimize so all they have to do is just create a request from here you can approve it right from the incident whether you want it or not it will also be recorded as a specific ticket as well so it will also be recorded as a ticket and you can choose to approve it and disapprove those requests as well <laughs> so if you look at the flow you can create packages you can create different departments in desktop central like i said you can create groups for uh, specific groups for finance, specific group for IT and map those packages to those departments and associate the softwares to those departments. And then uh, you can have the user to, you know, raise a request on the self-service portal. This is how the flow works. Installation request comes to desktop central server and then it, it's placed on the service test plus. Once it's approved, it comes back to the desktop central server. Then desktop central server initiates a command to get this application installed, right? That's the second use. So installing applications, remote management of your uh, end users. And finally, there could be configuration templates and few other options that's part of desktop central that you can utilize. So not only asset details, remote management and software details but for example let's say network issues i want to do some custom uh, troubleshooting say for example i want to run a script i showed you on the uh, initial initial presentation when i was there in the initial uh, stages i was showing you you can run a script you can select a script choose the first scripts that's available on desktop central where is this where are these scripts if I go to desktop central on configuration, if you go to the bottom that says script repository, you can add your scripts from here or you can use the templates that we have given for different operations. You can go ahead and select those scripts and add it to the repository. Those scripts will be available here whenever you, you know, select script file and you can deploy it to the end user machine. Not only, not only the, uh, not only those scripts, but also not only scripts, but also you could do like templates, right? You can create predefined templates on desktop central. What do I mean by templates, right? Let's let's go ahead and uh, see that. So on desktop central, I can create different templates, user defined templates. I go here. So configurations. Let's say I want to uh, install multiple applications, right? So I select the different packages, add more packages. Right. And I can save this as a template, right? So whenever, for example, when will this be useful? Uh, whenever there is a new machine that is being, or, or a new uh, user that's, that joins your organization, HR might request uh, the IT team to give away a laptop with all the application installed. So you will have an application template for uh, each, each uh, group of users. It could for IT, for finance, and for marketing. You'll have different people, different set of applications. You can package all these and create a template and save save them as templates. So once you do those predefined templates, you all you have to do is just say, publish this to Service Desk Plus. I'm going to initiate both, publish this to Service Desk Plus. 
So what happens is these templates will be available on the incidents, right? So I'm just trying to refresh it so for it to come up. Go to network issues. I mean, just a request for giving you an example. Custom resolve using templates. And in that, you will have on the drop down. It's going to take some time for it to come up. So you can select the templates right out of here. And then you can uh, have the ticket resolved. List of applications, you can select each template and get it installed. Not only applications for that matter, I can do anything I want on this configurations like uh, folder backup or a drive mapping, printer mapping, or blocking USBs, local user management, patching process even, right? If you want to group different patches together and have as a template, get it applied. All these operations, you could create it as a template and store it and you could uh, you know do that right out of the tickets right and even more i would probably like to show one more thing not only that if you if you want to go to the desktop central screen and complete those operations i can do that as well we have iframe integrations that we give so i click on desktop central here if i go to dashboard it's going to open desktop central inside your service disk plus right and if I want to do operations like software deployment for specific packages, creating packages, all those, I don't even have to go to Desktop Central. I can do it right inside my Service Desk Plus. So I can shift between requests and the Desktop Central screen right from wherever you are. So the system tools, anywhere you want, you can go navigate into Desktop Central right from the Service Desk Plus. You don't have to open it separately. So this is the integrations that you get. Just to sum it up, you have asset details that you can integrate, right? And you can you can have all the softwares, hardware details, uh, I mean, softwares and hardware details in the assets. And not only that, you can view beautiful CMDB, uh, di I mean, uh, relationship diagrams as well. Say, for example, I have a user on CMDB and I want to know what are the different, uh, uh, different, uh, you know, Endpoints he has different, uh, where does he belong to? All those relationships, you can maintain it. Whenever there is, I can see there are four requests from this application for this from this machine specifically. You can see which technicians are doing it. CMDB functionality will also be better for you, right? All the asset details will be copied here, and then you can decide the relationships and you can beautifully view them as well. So, asset details and remote management, software installation, and resolving issues through templates will be the best things that you could do from Service Desk Plus if you integrate Desktop Central. With that, I'm going to look in probably a couple of scenarios and solutions, and then I'm, I would take up questions. Some frequently asked scenarios, right? Scenarios, right? So notifying, how do I notify FireDrill? Things like that. Can I initiate announcement from a ticket, right? You could do that as well. The announcement will be something like this from Desktop Central point. It will open up a box and tell you the exact message what you have prepared. How do I create it? Let me take you to the product. In here, even on the home, I have option to add an announcement. So I click on add announcement. I can fill in what, are, what details I want. So I can go ahead and select the date and time it has to. And you can say display this announcement using Desktop Central. So you, either you can send it as an email, which is normal with Service Desk Plus, or if you have integrated, then you can display this as an uh, you know pop-up on the end user screen. So I can create an announcement that would create it, uh, a pop-up on the end user screen. Screenshot or a video of the problem, how do I achieve it? So I was discussing this in the initial part of my presentation. So whenever uh, a user wants to record a problem and send it over to you, can I do it? Yes, that's possible. So on the desktop central agent, I can send a help desk request. So from the agent, I can launch a portal like this, right? Send a help desk. So let's say I have uh, something like I have a problem with my print and uh, I don't know how to explain you that. So I say attachment and I do screen recording. So I click on start. So it's going to say three, two, one, it's on my other screen, but it's going to record. So something like this would come in and it's going it's recording my screen at the moment as we speak so once you click on stop this is going to pop up again so there is a small video file and if you click on send requests it's going to attach this video along with the ticket and it will be seen on the service disk plus 
So this way, the user could explain you better with a screen recording or even with a screenshot. He will be able to explain you what's going on in the system, and you could directly see.、So、all these are basically to reduce the downtime, right? There are downtime for the help desk technicians. So I go in here, as you can see, one more request unable to print, and it will have a video attachment to that. There you go. That's the attachment, video attachment from my system that I have raised. So、uh, I want a script again. This comes back to the same things that we have already、uh, discussed. Running a script in order to you know achieve uh, uh, repairing the AV applications or to you know remove applications. Yes, that is pretty much possible from、uh, Desktop Central point. How long does it take to data to be posted? I've explained this before. Again, this is one of the frequently asked questions. So. Every 90 minutes, our agent talks to desktop central server, and every every probably one day once or weekly or monthly, you can schedule the scan. Let me take you to the product to show that I can go to the asset management or inventory portion of ours, and I can say scan systems, and I can edit it. It could be weekly, monthly, right? I have already set a schedule for every day, but you can set a schedule how much, however you want to. Once you set this up. On the same timing, it will run a scan. But if there are any immediate changes, like hardware changes or software changes, we would log it as a ticket as well. That's also available. So you have configure alerts. So any changes, any installation or any hardware changes, software changes, license management. If it's reaching beyond seventy five percentage, if you'd like to get an alert or incident created, I can do that. If the individual partition is less than a specific disk space, all these you can create alerts, and these alerts can be logged in as tickets as well. When a computer is added or removed from a domain, do I have to change manually? No, Desktop Central agent will automatically update those changes.、Uh, for Desktop Central, it doesn't matter if you belongs to a domain or a work group. All it matters is if your agent is there on the machine, we would get those information for you. With that, I'm going to wrap up my session. The next seven minutes, I'll probably dedicate to the questions. So, in case you guys have any questions, I can go ahead and、uh, get those answers. I'm sure my awesome team would be answering your questions live, but I would like also like to take a few questions if it's there. All right, I can see that pretty much all those questions are already answered from my team、uh, individually. So with that, I think、uh, I'm I'm coming to the end of my session. So there's a question that says, "Can you send a copy of this?" Of course, once the session is over,、uh, you would receive a copy、uh, of the recording on your email. We'll be sending it to the attendees. Thank you for putting that up, James. So there's a common question that says, "I have 500 assets." So with the current model, or if you upgrade to the latest one, if you have 500 assets for just for managing the asset,、uh, like hardware and software details, you may not need a separate license. But if you'd like to manage other functionalities like remote control or patching, yes, you would have to probably purchase、uh, the、uh, the number of assets for the a number of assets that you would require to manage should be purchased on Desktop Central, right? And、uh, it's just one license. For example, it depends on what type of license you purchase. If you are purchasing enterprise license, then you get all those except for OS deployment and mobile device management. But if you are purchasing a UEM license, you pretty much get everything. So depending on the license type that you purchase, you will get all those functionalities on Desktop Central. But if you no, don't want to invest extra, just the asset management, it's already there. Possible to change the language on DC agent. Uh, you have a special language pack for the server.、Uh, you could go ahead and purchase it, and that should actually change the language on Desktop Central agents as well. Is there a better way to replace old STP agent versus Desktop Central agent? We do have.、Uh,
uh, we do we do have option uh, 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 to know you know uh, if you are upgrading the, to the latest version of S Services Plus. From my understanding, we uh, we just recently released it. It's going to replace the old uh, agents automatically. But if you'd like to do it through script, yes, that there is options for it. Just reach out to our support. We should be able to give you a script that can. Uh, you know, clear the existing uh, agent and then, uh, you know, to replace it, you can push it from the console. Right, just have an additional information from one of my technicians. He said, if you are an existing STP and DC customer, if you have 1,000 licenses in Service Desk Plus and 500 in uh, DC, you can perform both you know, asset scanning as well as remote control for all the th thousand. You don't have to, you know, buy extra 500. So if you have thousand licenses in Service Desk Plus, you should be able to do remote control and asset details as of now. Language pack, uh, you could probably get in touch with our sales. It's sales at managingengine.com. They should tell you uh, because it's a separately licensed, the language pack, but I can tell you where to change that. So I go to the product desktop central on here personalize so i can choose which language i want this is exactly what you have to what you need so display language right now is english if i have to have another language i have to purchase that add on that's a classical example So auto updates of the earning application, yes, the older versions will also be available and uh, uh, not just the new ones, but anywhere you use like templates or self-service portal, we would push only the new ones. Uh, older ones will be available as packages, right? I think you are referring to the automatic updates on software deployments. So with respect to that, uh, let me probably give you, uh, show you that. So with that, uh, self-service portal settings, right? So you can publish all those to, uh, that's more related to automatic updates, right? I got it. So if I have to say, let's say, for example, I have enabled it. We have three different packages. Only one will be uploaded. So the, all the other three things will be created and it will be there on the list of packages. Let's 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 try for a template. If you click on create package. There is the option whether you want to update it automatically or not. Hope that answers your question. Moving on to the next one. If I'm installing DC agent by GPO, do I need to replace the package files with the new version release? Um, technically, you don't have to because even if you install the old version. The moment it contacts the server, we will upgrade those agents. But it's always best practice to probably either replace those GPOs agent once in a while, like six months or so. It's a good practice to do. But even if you're not doing it, no harm in it, we will upgrade it for you. I think we pretty much have answered all your questions. Thank you very much for your active participation. Uh, in case, even in future, if you have questions, please feel free to contact us. We would definitely love to answer your questions and help you out. Thank you very much for attending session. You guys all have a wonderful day. Thank you very much.